Time is 6.43, kicking off news to go with a live look at Milwaukee this morning where the Republican National Convention is getting started in about six hours. All of this coming less than 48 hours after an attempted assassination on the former president, President Trump. We'll have much more on that historic attack and reaction from local lawmakers here in just a few minutes. But first, today is a weather impact day to start off the week and today, tomorrow, as well as Wednesday, all days that you will need to be weather aware for pop-up storms, showers throughout our area. Yeah, mm -hmm. WT meteorologist Katie Donovan is timing out that first round because we could see this in two parts today, Katie. Yeah, thankfully nothing severe this morning, but as we go into the afternoon hours, we could see some additional storms that develop uh, potentially becoming strong. It's a tricky forecast. Models don't like setups like today and tomorrow, uh, but we'll talk through what we know and what we're expecting as we head through the next 24 to 36 hours. Uh, radar right now is going to show some spotty showers back to the west. That is a leading edge of a broken line of showers and storms that were of severe overnight last night. Uh, it's dropping into the area, so we're not expecting morning severe weather, but hit and miss showers through Franklin County, through Brookville, places along 74, and then back west of Sunman, and then Ripley County also seeing some steadier showers. Osgood and Versailles um, looking at some rainfall this morning. It looks to be a little bit more moderate here right along 421. But to the west, we have more widespread showers and storms coming in. Those are going to be over the next couple of hours. Again, likely falling apart. But in the wake of those showers, we could see additional storms developing later today. 75 right now. You can see some clouds out there. Those are streaming in ahead of the showers to our west. 12 hour forecast today. We'll We'll feature some sunshine after some of our morning rain, uh, so it's going to be hot. It's going to be humid and then again, additional storms possible for the second half of the day. I'll have a timeline and future cast coming up right now. I'll send things back over to Kelly with some traffic. And you could track the path of the storms and their impact on you all from your phone. You could download WWT's mobile app to make sure you have the alerts turned on. We'll let you know when severe weather is headed our way. Kel. All right, Megan, thank you. So as we do watch traffic, things have been pretty calm out there this morning. Again, we know that weather is going to start to move in really as a lot of people do hit the road. So just be aware of that here. You can see the cut in the hill to uh, 7175. All directions looking great, uh, even as people are approaching the city. Nothing major that's going to slow you down. And we're seeing that reflected in our drive times, but traffic starting to pick up, especially down uh, off the 275 loop uh, to 7175 through Florence and coming into downtown. But again, nothing major, a little bit of a slow spot there, uh, 275 near Blue Ash. But again, just more people hitting the road. Nothing that's going to really slow anyone down. All of our drive times looking really good this morning, still mostly in the green. Again, that area from 7175, 275 to the Brent Spence Bridge, taking eight minutes instead of six. So really not much that you'll have to add onto your drive times. But we're here to keep you updated again as that weather does start to move in. Should anything change, we'll let you know. Stephen. All right, Kelly, thank you. 646. The Republican National Convention begins here in just a few hours. Former President Donald Trump is expected to become the Republican Party's official nominee less than 48 hours after he was in the assassination attempt on Saturday. One of the rally goers was killed in the Pennsylvania shooting. Two others were seriously injured. 57 year old David Dutch and 74 year old James Copenhaver are expected to survive. Now, that man killed has been identified as 50 year old Corey Compatore. Pennsylvania's governor says that he died a hero protecting his wife and children. President Biden addressed the nation last night attempting to bring down the temperature as political tensions rise. Disagreement is inevitable in American democracy. It's part of human nature. But politics must never be a literal battlefield, a God forbid, a killing field. I believe politics ought to be an arena for peaceful debate, to pursue justice, to make decisions guided by the Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. We stand for an America, not of extremism and fury, but of decency and grace. All of us now face the time of testing as the election approaches. As lawmakers on both sides condemn the attack, one of the first to comment was Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, who's on the short list for Trump's running mate. Shortly after the attack, our camera saw a growing security detail outside his home here in greater Cincinnati. WLWT News Live's Daniel Dindak is live this morning with what this could indicate. Danielle. 
Yeah, Stephen, for security purposes, WLWT is not identifying where Vance lives. But since Donald Trump has yet to name his running mate, there is some speculation about that heightened police presence at Vance's house. But now NBC sources told us that police presence at Vance's home does not include the security service and that it is not actually related to the Veep stakes. We did confirm that Governor Mike DeWine approved the state police assistance outside the senator's home within 30 minutes of that assassination attempt, but the governor's office did not go on to say the specific reason or if it's just out of precautionary reasons as well. Reporting live, Danielle Dindak, Deville to VAT, News 5. All right, Danielle, thank you. With thousands of Republican leaders gathering in Milwaukee, security understandably top of mind and some help for security coming from Cincinnati. WLWT News 5's Richard Childs live with how local officers joining in those efforts. Richard. Now, 25 Cincinnati police officers already in Milwaukee at this point. They arrived on Saturday. We've been briefed and received their assignments to support law enforcement efforts there. In fact, Cincinnati police officers have been sworn in as peace officers in Wisconsin, so they do have arrest power if necessary. Now, Cincinnati police coordinating their efforts with Secret Service and Milwaukee police, saying that there will not be any change to security measures that are already in place amidst, of course, the attempted uh, uh, getting a chance to get a chance to talk about that attempted assassination attempt. Now, according to NBC, the Secret Service officers in Milwaukee police said there will be no changes to those security measures that are already in place. Officials say that that plan had been underway for the last 18 months and the convention already designated as a heightened level security event. Now, it is important to note, of course, while there's this heightened area of, of course, high scrutiny that the uh, in the state of Wisconsin, it is a carry state, so it may be possible to see people carrying weapons outside of the RNC convention perimeter. Reporting live this morning from Cincinnati Police Headquarters, Richard Childs, WWT News 5. Richard, thank you. We'll continue to keep you updated as we learn more about the assassination attempt on former President Trump. You can stay updated on any developments as we learn them by scanning the QR code on your screen or visiting WLWT.com. Meanwhile, in Commitment 2024, a major day ahead as NBC News anchor Lester Holt sits down with President Joe Biden. This will be his first interview since the assassination attempt on former President Trump. And it also comes as more concerns come from his own party about his ability to remain president. The full unedited interview will air tonight at 9 p.m. right here on WLWT, followed by special coverage of the Republican National Convention. Again, that is tonight at 9 right here on WLWT. We are leading the way with breaking news this morning. Colerain police are searching for a missing 11-year-old. Trevanta Page is on your screen. His picture right now, last seen yesterday, he failed to return home. Police say they do not know what clothes he was last seen wearing, but Colerain police call him a critically missing child. Anyone with information about Trevanta Page's whereabouts should contact Colerain police. News this morning, a major road closed for hours over the weekend after several cars crashed in Butler County. It happened at about 3 p.m. yesterday on State Route 129 in Liberty Township. Our crew saw at least two cars involved in the crash. Right now, it's not clear how many people were hurt, if any. The road has since reopened. Happening now, traffic headaches for people looking to cross the river for their morning commute. For the next few months, crews are beginning repair work on the Daniel Carter Beard Bridge today. The Big Mac Bridge, some of you may call it. So that will last from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. each Sunday through Thursday for the next 90 days. And during that time, traffic will still flow, but there will be double or triple lane closures. So it is overnight. It really will impact our third shifters, people who work very early in the morning. Officials say the preventative work is key, especially ahead of the upcoming Brent Spence Bridge Corridor project. They want everything to be safe for uh, maybe the increased traffic they're going to see there. And happening today, a controversial, controversial law takes effect in Kentucky. Advocates worry this could impact homeless communities in a negative way. Giacomo Luca breaks down what the Safer Kentucky Act does, but also the concerns behind it. Giacomo? Yeah, Megan, while there is support from law enforcement agencies across the state of Kentucky, homeless advocates do have concerns. They say uh, lawmakers in support uh, say they'll hold criminals accountable by stiffening penalties for crimes like vandalism, carjacking and drug dealing. But homeless advocates have opposed provisions that ban camping in areas like parks, sidewalks or under bridges. They say it criminalizes homelessness. Violators could face up to 90 days in 
jail, a misdemeanor, as well as a $250 fine. Now, I did reach out to law enforcement agencies in northern Kentucky who say they plan to enforce this on a base, uh, case by case basis, uh, focusing only uh, as a tool when needed. Live in Covington this morning, Giacomo Luca, WLWT News 5. Giacomo, thank you. It was a rough weekend for FC Cincy fans. Orange and Blue hoping to keep the winds rolling in at home on Saturday as they look to defend their title as top dog in the Supporters' Shield standings. It was Cincinnati and Charlotte at TQL this weekend. The away team got two goals in the first half, and despite an answer from Acosta in stoppage time before the break, FCC couldn't get it done in the second half. It was a 1-3 loss here. The Reds, on the other hand, looking good to start the weekend with back-to-back -back wins over the the Marlins on Friday and Saturday. They were looking for that series sweep to close out the weekend heading into the All-Star break. It was a slow start though Sunday, scoreless through the fourth, tied at two after six, but the Marlins tacked one more on in the eighth, and that was the ball game. Now it is time for the All-Star break, and we could see some action from one of our guys. Hunter Green and Ellie De La Cruz are both going down to Texas for the star-studded Midsummer Classic. After that, back to work later in the week, the Reds head to Washington for a three game set against the Nationals. That series will get started on Friday. And we have all our big stories and what you need to know to start your day on our daily podcast, five on five and five. You can find it wherever you get your podcast. But right now, got to get a check on traffic because things are not too bad, Kelly, but that rain is coming in the next couple hours. Exactly. So you'll just want to be aware of that before you get ready to head out. Maybe make sure you do have the umbrella packed in the car. You can see here the Norwood lateral 75 area looking good. Traffic flowing just fine in both directions, which is great uh, for seven in this area and you can see the same thing reflected on our map 75 in the clear 71 looking good where we're seeing some increased traffic coming in on 74 71 75 from northern Kentucky and maybe 471 coming in from Campbell County but otherwise things looking pretty good out there especially for a Monday morning at 654 we're usually seeing a little bit more traffic so maybe people will take in the day off drive times and travel times all looking good in the green here and you should be able to get downtown with no major issues again we're here for you so if the rain starts to move in and slow things down, we'll keep you updated. Katie, let's talk about that rain because this is a tricky forecast for today. Absolutely, yeah. So we've got some scattered showers coming in this morning, but a tricky part of the storms this afternoon. I think there is a chance that we could see some storms redeveloping in the wake of what we're seeing right now. Some of those could be strong, maybe even severe for the second half of the day. We're looking at some scattered rain across southeast Indiana right now. It's really light. Um, a lot of this has been falling apart here, really only have sprinkles left now around Brookville, Bath, Riley uh, and areas like Okeana. More substantial light showers across Ripley County this morning into Delaware, Milan, Versailles and then back towards Napoleon. We're also seeing some light showers there. But again, associated with a larger system that came out of Iowa overnight last night, it was severe through the overnight hours. Um, this is what's left of it. We've got some embedded uh, heavier downpours here. It doesn't look like we have any lightning left, but that's going to be working in over the next couple of hours, continuing to weaken as it moves through the region. Uh, but again, in its wake, we could see some storms redeveloping today. Some of those may produce some gusty winds for the second half of the day. But you can see your future cast through today showing a few isolated showers this morning. We'd get into a bit of a break as you head towards the midday. And then I think sometime around two, three o'clock, we could start to see these storms refiring and then moving east. Some again containing some gusty winds through the evening hours. Overnight tonight, a Another line of storms likely developing, dropping in through tomorrow morning. That could bring us some early showers on Tuesday, and we could potentially see a repeat of strong afternoon storms tomorrow. Cold front comes in on Wednesday, brings us nicer weather. Okay, good time to download that app, WLWT. Uh, you can find it everywhere you get apps. The Today Show just minutes away, and we are back in 25 minutes.